Since March 2004, the EU Council has had a dedicated full-time anti-terrorism coordinator. The role is designed to help bring cohesion to the efforts of the 27 EU countries' fight against terrorism in prevention, combating it and response. Gilles de Kerkhover has filled this EU counterterrorism role since 2007. NATO Review quizzed Mr de Kerkhover on how the EU sees the terrorist threat in general and the menace of homegrown terrorism in particular. A recent study in the UK showed that the number of people who had died from homegrown terrorist activities was the same number over the last 10 years who've died from bee stings. Do you feel that that's representative of the threat of homegrown terrorism? Um, it's indeed a challenge to uh, get the best assessment possible of the threat, not to uh, exaggerate the threat or to overlook the threat. That's why I think a position like mine was created, to make sure that it, it's at the top of the political agenda and we uh, avoid these ups and downs where in the direct aftermath of an attack you just overreact and then you, you start uh, sleeping and, and forgetting. The, it's always necessary to assess whether your resources are in line with the needs and, and uh, terrorism is not different. Some have said that the Arab Spring provides new training camps for potential terrorists. Does this mean that in Afghanistan and in Pakistan we're not actually dealing with the problem, we're just moving it? We make progress, no doubt. We've succeeded in, in degrading seriously AQ Corps, no, no doubt. But as I've said, we unfortunately have uh, weak states uh, where the franchise develop. Uh, I was recently in Yemen, AQAP has been combated by, by the government and has moved probably on the eastern part, but it's still there and has no use asymmetric uh, tactics and, and have uh, in the, the last two weeks mounted attack in Sana'a. I would say it's not the Arab Spring which is a problem on the country. Some people have claimed that the threat of homegrown terrorism has been inflated for political or commercial reasons. What's your opinion of that? I, I would not say we have had uh, uh, many dozens of, of cases. We have had serious cases and the police and the intelligence services and the security services have been able to, to stop people before they start executing the attack. We've had in the last seven, ten years a flow of Europeans going abroad for training and purposes and to fight. And, and many of them were getting back home quite easily because they have the passport of one of the member states. They, in a way, are like clean skin and, and difficult to detect. Um, they are dangerous because they have been trained uh, to use explosive, uh, to asymmetric warfare. Um, they are dangerous because they may inspire others uh, coming back from the tribal uh, area of Pakistan may be uh, uh, glamour to some youngsters. Uh, so that's one phenomenon. Uh, the other one is people uh, with no connection whatsoever and, and uh, may be radicalized on the internet. Uh, they may have had some encounter with, with uh, radical people, but they're not uh, directed by someone, uh, an organization. We've had several cases. Uh, a Chechen who was living in Belgium who went to Denmark. We've of course had, uh, but not for AQ-related terrorism, but for uh, extreme right terrorism, Breivik in Norway. How difficult is it for the EU to deal at a multinational level with what is effectively a national or even local phenomenon in homegrown terrorism? Let's take one example. Uh, you may remember that two, three years ago, um, parcel bombs were sent from Yemen to the US, but they were intercepted in the UK. That led us to realize that if we had worked a lot on the security of the passengers and the hand luggage of the passengers, uh, we hadn't done a lot on cargo. And in fact, we thought we were safe when embarking a plane, but uh, most of the plane had cargoes as well. And so we start working on a common uh, action plan on cargo, which has uh, led to many, many measures. This is something very important for the uh, internal security of the member state. How much does the lack of coordination at the national level frustrate the work that you do at the EU level? It's, it's no frustration, it's just a continuum, uh, continuous effort, uh, I used to say, 
joking a bit that everyone is in favor of coordination, but no one wants to be coordinated. It's a bit true. Uh, but th we, we have achieved a lot of, of improvement since 9-11. Just l let's take information sharing. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the services were not sharing uh, a lot. No, they do. Half of the member states have set up a fusion center like the NCTC in the US. Uh, where all the information uh, uh, are sent and, and analysed. Um, this, is, this is a sea change. How difficult is it to balance up the freedom of our democratic societies with the security that's needed to keep them safe? We want to keep a, a free, uh, open internet and at the same time avoid the uh, use of the internet for, as a, a virtual training camp, as a means of communication, as a means to collect money, launder money, uh, as a means to radicalize and so forth. So um, we have uh, started a dialogue with the ISP, the Internet Service Providers, to make sure that uh, illegal, of course, and undesirable website be removed. We are building a capability at Europol to monitor the internet, website, uh, chat room, social networks and so on. Does terrorism need a new definition? No, I think uh, uh, we, we need to make sure that the definition cope with the, 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 the evolution of the criminal behaviour. The more you uh, deal with terrorists as criminal, as the ugly criminal they are, uh, the better, because in a way you de-glamourize uh, these people who are ugly criminals and not the combatant of, I don't know, what stupid idea.